Over the last four months, I've been putting together the new centerpiece of my home lab, something that's going to allow me to centralize my data into one point and provide additional performance for all the different projects I'm working on and all the different testing of open source software that I do each and every week. This is an HP DL360 G9 server that I purchased refurbished off of eBay. I purchased it for a little under 200 bucks and shipping also came out to be free. So a relatively good little machine. It has two Xeon processors totaling 24 cores. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. And off of Amazon, I purchased four four terabyte hard drives, giving me a total of raw capacity of 12 terabytes. Now, this was a relatively large purchase for me. So I needed some decent reasoning behind it. And for that, I have three main key points that I wanted to attack with this server. The first one, like I mentioned in the intro, is that I wanted a centralized place to do all my work from and to store all my data from. Currently, I'm just using a variety of different older Mac minis and Raspberry Pies and one really old server that I just kind of need to decommission at this point. It's not even worth running. Um, and I wanted a place where I could start putting all this data into one spot. One server that was going to be performant enough to run all the little programs and some of the larger ones I'm experimenting, testing, and building. And I just wanted a centralized place to store data. And that's what the server is hopefully going to be and has turned out to be in my couple months of testing. I also wanted something that was going to store data for myself and for my family. We pay for iCloud storage and we use up a lot of it and we're getting pretty close to Apple's two terabyte limit. So because of that, I wanted something that could run in a system like Image or similar options so that I could start storing this photo data locally and have it be able to back up from anywhere else in the world, much like iCloud does. And the third reason was I want to start decloudifying my life. Much like my last reason, I want a solution that's more local. I pay for a lot of different cloud options and yes, they're great, but time and time again, people who purchase things digitally, for example, movies or music, when the company you purchase it from loses that license, you also lose that license. Meaning you thought you purchased something, you probably really didn't. You probably just signed a contract to use it for the amount of time that that company has a license to it. And this is something I don't want to fall victim to. I own a lot of my own media, whether it be music, movies, or TV shows. I own them on Blu-ray, I own them on CD, and I own them on DVD. And I wanted a server that I could start storing this media to in a way that is easily accessible from anywhere else in the home. Now, to get the server set up, I did a couple pretty easy things. First thing I did was reapply the thermal paste underneath the heat sinks for the CPUs. I also reseated all the memory just in case, put the four hard drives in, and did my first boot. Originally speaking, I thought I was going to need to use HP's hardware RAID, so I provisioned all the drives, which took a little over two days for it to process. And then I got to pick my operating system. For this project, I chose TrueNAS. Why? Because I knew a lot about it. I hadn't had a chance to test it yet, and I wanted a server where I could do that. And from the looks of all the different reviews and documentation I'd read about it, it was relatively stable. And even using enterprise environments, was gonna, which was going to allow me to learn more about these enterprise-grade uh, software and hardware. So I got TrueNAS installed, except I made the beginners a mistake of installing TrueNAS to the actual hard drives that I wanted to use as my storage. Thus meaning I had to reprovision those drives again under HP's RAID configurator and try again. This time I purchased an M.2 drive and an M.2 PCIe card to put in the server, and that's where I installed TrueNAS the second time around. Issue now is, as many of you who've used TrueNAS know, um, I used the hardware RAID that HP gave me, which was a mistake because at the time I only knew at the time, going through the TrueNAS setup, it wanted multiple drives for a pool, and because it was all shown up as one, that created an issue. So I ended up deprovisioning all those drives, making them individual, so that TrueNAS could do its own ZFS RAID. Now, I know there's probably a way around this. I just didn't know enough at the time to make that work, and being a relative, being a beginner in this space, I didn't really have the patience to set something like that up yet. So I just let TrueNAS do its own ZFS RAID and not worry about whatever HP had built into the server at this time. With that in mind, I now had a fresh install of TrueNAS. I got it set up on the network with a couple different shares for just general file storage for my phone and iPad, and another one for Time Machine backups of my computer and my parents' computers. Pretty simple, pretty easy to set all that up. It was quite simply just setting up the different shares on the network and making sure all the permissions were set up correctly. From there, I got to the fun part. I actually got to start installing a couple of different apps. I made sure to get Jellyfin installed for storing all my media. I got Image installed, which is a new open source photo solution, so I could start backing up media from my phone and from all my, the rest of my family members. Can also start backing up their photos and videos. It works pretty well. The UI is pretty nice and kind of relevant towards Google Photos. Granted, I never use Google Photos, but it was cool to see a decently well put together UI, which is not common for solutions that are free. An image is free. 
Um, and its background backup system is also quite nice, meaning I don't need to just sit there and wait for my phone to back up all the time. It's doing it in the background. And with the help of Cloud for Tunnels, it can do it from anywhere else in the world. Granted, it is relatively slow. It's a cheap and free solution that I'm really enjoy testing out. And maybe eventually I'll set up something like a reverse proxy. I am experimenting with Tailscale to get something like that set up. But it's all work that maybe may, that will likely turn into future videos. With that being said, I also wanted to set the server up so I could get closer to my 321 backup solution. If you've not heard of this rule before, it's quite simple. It just simply involves having three copies of your data on two different media formats, with one of them being offsite. Currently, I meet most of that rule's policy. I have three copies of my data, one on my main machine, one on the server, and one in the cloud using a Backblaze subscription. I have one off-site, of course, with that Backblaze subscription. The only one I'm missing is having two different media types. Currently, I'm only using hard drives and SSDs. Yes, I guess I would consider those two relatively the same kind of format. So I may have to experiment with tape storage or something similar like that in the future. But in the event that my MacBook fails, I have my data on the server. In the event that the server fails or my house burns down, I can grab it from the cloud. Granted, if my house burns down, I probably have bigger issues to worry about. With this in mind, you're probably thinking, what happened to Unihost? You made a video about that like a year ago. Are you still using that? Actually, I'm not. I have completely switched over to either using cloud solutions for a lot of my work that I used to do on Unihost and now using TrueNAS apps for everything else. Yes, Unihost is great. I just didn't have a reason for using it anymore. And because I no longer have a public IP address from my house, a lot of it didn't work like it used to back when I did. Yes, I could run it on the cloud just fine, and maybe I will in the future, but I'm moving towards using more enterprise equipment because this is what I want to learn about. It's what I'm considering a career in eventually. So I want to learn about it as soon as I can, and learning it hands on is how I learn best. So setting up the server, learning about it, and using it each and every day is how. I'm learning a little bit more about these enterprise pieces of equipment. With that all in mind, this server is not going to be perfect forever. In fact, it has never been perfect. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. Operating on a shoestring budget means I had to make a lot of constraints. The first one being it only has 32 gigabytes of memory. And because ZFS uses memory as a cache, and because I didn't install a cache SSD at the time, it does slow down really quickly after file transfers, and especially because I'm also running a couple virtual machines for Minecraft servers and Ubuntu installs. That uses up a lot of memory too, and all of it just leads to me having many issues when copying data to it. Eventually, once I have enough money for it, I'll expand it to 64 or 120 gig gigabytes of memory, but that'll just have to come sometime in the future. Also speaking of which, I do plan to install a cache SSD, just try and speed up a lot of those data transfers as soon as possible. With that in mind, I thought 10 terabytes, which is how much data I have after it was formatted through ZFS, not 12 terabytes because it needs parity data space. With that in mind, I thought 10 terabytes was going to be enough. It is not. I am, I've already used 20% of the server in just the last couple of months, and that is rapidly increasing as more photos get backed up through image and with more data that I transfer. And I'm kind of a data hoarder, so I save a lot of data just for future reference. And so I save every step of the projects I do just for to look back on and see how much I've learned. But eventually, that's going to run out of space. I have a couple options. I could either purchase another server to kind of replace this one. I could look into getting a JBOD set up so I have additional storage space available, or just a bunch of disks, and other systems kind of like that. On the other side of the equation, I could look into building another kind of server, something that isn't enterprise or decommissioned. I could look into building like really power efficient mini PCs because while this does use a lot of power, it is still mathematically, it is still pay costing less per month than our subscriptions do. So it is technically cheaper. It just does use a lot more electricity than something like a power efficient mini PC would. Issue is those aren't as easy to add storage to. But if I build something custom sometime in the future, or if I ever have the budget for something like a Synology NAS or a Zima Cube or things like that, that would be really fun to play around with. But I just need something that was going to work, work on a budget, and something that I could tinker around with and use for quite a couple of months. And I think the server is going to serve its purpose quite well. Of course, I have to get a better rack for it relatively soon. But with all that in mind, it has been really fun to, to play around with, and it's going to serve as really good space for any of the future videos and projects I work on. Specifically, a project I have heard a lot of responses about was a couple months ago, I made a short about this Cisco IP phone that I set up. You might not be able to see it in this shot. But this IP phone I'm currently just setting up through WebEx configuration. But if I experiment with something like OpenPBX or solutions like that, I could run it here locally and cut out at least most of the subscription that I pay for that every month and now every year. Um, so a video on that is coming soon, at least for my current configuration. But if I, if more time allows and I learn how to set it up, I may just be able to host it here locally on that centralized area of my home lab.
With that being said, my home lab is growing. I'm focusing more on decloudifying my life with every project I do. And it's been really fun to learn about all these little things. I know I'm gonna make mistakes along the way, but that's how I learn. And because none of this is public, at least I have some sort of safety blanket there a little bit too. Um, thank you for watching this video. I know this is probably not what you're used to seeing on YouTube, a kid talking about home labs and server equipment, but thank you for giving me the chance and watching through to the end. It's really nice to see that people are interested in this kind of stuff. And thank you for hearing my thoughts and opinions and process of the mistakes and solutions I'm attempting to do here and on a budget. With that being said, thank you for watching today's video. I hopefully will have a lot more stuff coming in 2025. I know I didn't really make much this year, but I'm looking forward to making more videos as time goes on. With that being said, thanks again for watching for the third time. Have a great rest of your day. See y'all next time. Bye-bye.